FEM FEA analysis, advanced simulation mode. Finite element method, also known as FEM, is a numerical technique for finding approximate solutions to boundary value problems. It is also referred to as finite element analysis, FEA mode. This mode is a computational tool for performing engineering analysis. It includes mesh generation techniques driving complex geometric problems into small elements with the use of software programmed algorithms. The complex problem is commonly a physical system with underlying physics applied such as euler brunolis beam equation, the heat equation, and the Navier-Stokes equation. This advanced simulation mode is a good choice for analyzing problems over complicated domains such as building structures, cars, oil pipelines, and numerical weather prediction. When the desired precision varies over entire domains or when the solution lacks smoothness, in this tutorial we will discuss and perform several solutions for a scaled beam of a bridge. So to start we have our .prt file modeled and ready to start designing the analysis features by entering into application and starting advanced simulation mode, which is also design simulation mode. From here, we will create our new FEM and simulation file. These files will produce a FEM file that contains the mesh and material properties and a SIM file that contains the load, boundary conditions, and solution options for analysis. These files will be output in the same directory as the PRT file, and, it's, and we will also be creating an idolized part. There are different types of solvers. Between these solvers, it has a lot to do with what type of licensing you have on your CAD software, but there's thermal, flow, space system thermals, multi-physics, ANSYS, LSD, YNA is for nonlinear deformation like car crash testing, but a lot of these have to do with utilizing multiple softwares to create these types of simulations. For this tutorial, we will use NX and Nastrum, which delivers good results when loaded within the material specified yield point with a structural analysis type. Now we are prompted with a solution wizard that contains several different options to choose what type of solution you would like. We will be using the system cells element iterate solver Reviewing the solution types, there are global and subcase for the two most common. Also, flexible body, linear buckling, and another popular solution for when a component is in motion would be a nonlinear static global constraints. But for this tutorial, we will be using a linear static global constraint solution type. Now we can expand our files in the simulation navigator, and we will begin by entering in our idolize.prt part to create a wave geometry linker to not create any confliction if this component is attached to an assembly by using the wave option and selecting the body, then disabling the main component so that it's unusable in this analysis. And within the part navigator, we're able to see that this is our link body. So within this link body, you're able to use all of the synchronous modeling commands to edit and create as many types of link bodies to create multiple solutions. I will create two. One will be a solid bar, while the other is a beam shape structure to compare the analysis results to. We will start with the second link body. And we are able to assign our ge geometry preparation, which we will use a divided face method to create more realistic points to create our constraints and loads. The first will be the top middle line by a tool option of offset curve and face. And create two on the bottom for both ends where there will be a fixed constraint on that will act as though this structure is welded to the ground.
Now we can proceed to the fem file and assign our material and mesh. We will also go to the simulation navigator and hide our first polygon body so that our wave geometry link is only visible. Now we will proceed to menu, tools, the material settings, and assign a material. Select the body and assign aluminum 6061 and assign a 3D tetrahedral mesh, automatic element size. By decreasing this value, we'll increase the amount of iterations the solution will produce. We're also able to change the serve curvature base size variation around the edges to define how fine or coarse we would like the mesh to be. Now we can enter into the dot simulation file. First, we will apply our load type. As you can see, there are different types for temperature, acceleration, force, bearings, torques, hydrostatic pressure, gravity, rotation. We will use a simple force with a magnitude and direction type. At our polygon edge, we have previously created in our idolized part. We will input a force of 1,000 pounds per foot and specify a Z vector and give it a direction downwards so we are compressing the bridge instead of putting it into tension. Now we can create our constraint types. There are different user defined constraints, fixed, pin, cylindrical, slider, rollers, symmetry, and automatic coupling constraints. For this we will use two fixed constraints to create the two base points for the bridge. By using the polygon edges that we have created before. Now to include further analysis with a separate type of solution, we will insert a adaptivity setup by choosing our solution type. And we are able to input different strain energy percentages and steady stress, absolute and relative references, as well as how many number of iterations we will be creating. These iterations are extremely helpful for adhering to design requirements. By assigning certain accuracy parameters, you are able to consecutively increase the mesh element size. By doing so, you also increase the results until you either reach an acceptable design or, or results requiring adjustment. We will target our minimum element length to be one thousandths of an inch with three numbers of iterations with a one thousand pound foot per square inch squared steady stress PSI and hit OK and it will create an adaptivity setup in the simulation navigator. Now we can solve our solution. Several dialog boxes appear for solution monitoring and, and information. By reviewing the solution monitors graph and nastrum graph solution 101, we are able to see the amount of iterations, equations that this solution has just solved in a very short amount of time. For this solution, it was 70 approximately, but for refining meshes, the amount of equations that this software can compute is in the millions range, which can easily blue screen lower end computers. Now we can exit all of the prompts and enter into the results. We will expand our structural results list and enter into the displacement nodal. Now from here we are given an exaggerated animation with our tetrahedrals with different values set to all of these colors that we are able to identify with the identify results tool and clicking our nodal points. Here at the most stressed area we are able to see that there is a three thousandths of an inch deformation from the original design after applying the 1000 pounds of force. Expanding the stress element results we can then enter into the von Mises stress and compare if this design adheres to, to the yield strength from authoritative standards, which the maximum for this component is showing 9500 PSI, which for aluminum 6061 is acceptable, as shown here. Compared to its 40,000 PSI elastic limit range, from here we are also able to animate this simulation's load with an exaggerated play and also create a graph between, between its neutral axis by creating a user-defined path between two node IDs.
By doing so, we are given a viewport dialog box that we are able to create a new window and view this graph results from its path length to its displacement in the analysis. Now we can return to home and, and solve our adaptivity setup, which is a separate type of solution. That prompts a user-friendly window with the calculated strain energy error, the steady stress for the absolute and the relative values of this model, and if the model is converged properly or not. Now we will create our second solution using our second wavelength geometry. We will enter into the idolize.prt file again, back into the parts navigator, and switch our linked bodies. Create our geometry preparation. Enter into the FEM and apply our mesh. The material is still carried over. Enter back into the SIM file and reapply our loads and constraints. Now we are ready to solve our second solution. Reviewing the solution, this one has created approximately 90 equations. And we are able to review the results. Now a great function for the layout in this software is we are able to create different side-by-sides or upper and lower multiple size views to compare the different analysis, which we will do so with our previous solution. By selecting the viewpoint. Now by reviewing the results of the two beams, we are able to see that the solid beam has a maximum displacement of three thousandths of an inch, while the form beam has a displacement of 48 thousandths of an inch, which are both acceptable values compared to the yield strength limit, but obviously creating a component with the least mass and volume is the most efficient way to go about designing. And this is the type of analysis that you're able to compare and slowly design and create a as close to possibly perfectly functioning design by utilizing these settings and identifying the results and enhancing the best design. And that concludes our FEA tutorial.